Hey everyone, we are back. I'm Ipsha. I'm Raf. And we are Murder at the Round Table, a true crime podcast. We've been gone for a bit, so and we did not update anyone. We need to get better at doing that, but I hope you're on a better schedule now. Yeah, uh, it's just a, you know, hiatus and all that. Some of us had work, others had exams. You know, life to be lifing. Yeah, life to be lifing. But anyways, if you enjoy true crime or listening to people talk, please do consider giving us a follow on Spotify and Amazon, leaving us a review and uh, sharing your favorite episodes with your friends. These things do help us a lot. And if you also want to follow us on Instagram, our handle will be in the show notes below. Instagram is generally the place where we put uh, photo exhibits or pictures of maps and stuff that might help you understand the episode a little bit better but any sort of support really does boost us and supports us a lot so as usual i don't really plan a pre-segment because my episodes do tend to be a little bit longer however let's talk about life since we have been on a break how is life for you during our hiatus what were you doing what sort of sneaky things were you doing no nah, no nah, nothing sneaky um just everything happening at once i guess uh, a lot happening at work I have some family in town that were entertaining for for a few months that's pretty awesome we don't usually get to see them so it's, it's cool to have them here had an exam earlier this week started taking dance of all things so mm-hmm. that's fun yeah that one came out of left field even for me but you know it's like oh new new hobby unlocked new expensive hobby unlocked new expensive hobby that's for sure yeah if if any of you guys like ever have an interest in doing anything like that just just stick to youtube videos honestly <laughs> Yeah. No, dancing is so much fun. I hope it goes well for you. What have I been doing? Absolutely nothing, to be honest. I've been working mostly and then, you know, just trying to get sleep and working out, but it's just been life. Nothing nothing interesting. Wait, we 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 can't contradict what we said earlier. <laughs> what did I say? We said we were too busy to update them on on like social media and stuff and now we're now he's saying, oh, yeah, no, I was just chilling. Yeah, but chilling with the things in life. <laughs> yeah, just life happens. So originally today, I was going to speed run three stories. Mm-hmm. And these are stories, like almost events that we've talked about at the end of the first episode. So if you remember, yep. there's names that I mentioned and the events of what happened to those people. So I was going to tell you three of them. However, when I scripted one, okay. just one of the stories and ran it through, it took me 20 minutes. And I think I only accounted for like five to seven minutes for you talking. And it was quite lengthy. <laughs> But the story that I'm about to share today, I have a lot of questions for you towards the end Mm -hmm. because you obviously said that you see a pattern of what happened in Nahani on that first episode. Okay. And I kind of want to see if your thought of that pattern has changed in any way, if that makes sense. (laughs) All right. I certainly have a lot of questions for you. I think you'll have questions for me as well. So it'll be a good discussion. So here are the trigger warnings. The case is unsolved. There's a murder involved. There's mental health involved. There's suicide and there is starvation. So after all this, this would be a good time to decide if, how, when, and where you want to listen to this episode. And if you do stick to listening to us at any time, please listen with care. My sources that I used is The Legends of Nahani Valley by Hammerson Peters, which is an audiobook. And I was not really able to find any other sources beyond this because there's no other kind of like stories or news articles that really talk about mm-hmm. the one story that I'm going to share with you and then the two others that I initially had planned. But I'm going to save that for a different episodes. So I I did refer back to our first episode that we did of the McLeod brothers and for the audience if you haven't listened to that one yet you can do that later or 
whenever you want to. You don't necessarily have to listen to these episodes in order, but we do refer to a lot of the stuff that happened in previous episodes. So just keeping that in mind. So yeah. All right, let's go to Nahani. <laughs> so at the end of the first episode, I mentioned a bunch of names and events. And one of those were Martin Jorgensen, uh, the Swiss prospector who died not too long after the McLeod brothers. Do you remember him? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, I'm going to tell you his story anyway. <laughs> yep. So this is his story allegedly and I actually listened back to your theories. Yeah, like I said, I'm kind of looking forward to any if any of your theories change. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the theories that, well, not theories, I'm not going to quote you because I don't remember, but you said that you saw a pattern that often the people that are dying after they go into Nahani are prospectors and miners. Yeah. So I'm kind of seeing if that changes for you. So again, this is from the audiobook. And our story starts in 1908, sometimes after the McLeod brothers died. The news and story of the brothers and how they went to Nahani to find the gold, how they found it and how they died under the mysterious circumstances that kind of spread like wildfire um many of the articles during this time also mentioned that the gold that the McLeod brothers found are still out there which led to many prospectors to risk their lives to find the gold and one of those prospectors was our buddy martin jorgensen he was a swiss prospector and he was really into finding this gold like he really wanted it badly yeah Sorry, I'm, I'm just niggering because, and I really should not be laughing, but this is literally the plot of One Piece. Yeah? Just, <laughs> every everyone finds out, oh, there there's some, like, secret treasure, and y'all just need to go find it, risk your lives and find it, and I'm like... It's, it's just once people know that there's like something to be found and especially if somebody died yeah in relation to it it's like oh there's a secret treasure somewhere mm-hmm. like go get it yeah it just makes that experience like a little bit better yeah like you know like wanting to do it i don't know if this is a plot twist or not that gold that the mcloyd brothers found could potentially still be out there no nah, don't 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 put any ideas in my brain i still have student loans <laughs> oh boy <laughs> So, continuing, Mm -hmm. uh, much like the McLeod brothers, Jorgensen was a very competent prospector. He was an outdoorsy guy. He had great communication skills, and everybody liked him in the northern area. This included white folks and also native people. Okay, so... There are two versions of the story. They are very different in some ways. And when I read them both, both of them could have happened, like, along with each other. So that's just my opinion, but... Mm-hmm. They both could have happened. So the first version has versions within this version. Yep. Anyways, I'm just going to get into it. It's called the Field Pool and Atkinson version. And according to this version, Martin Jorgensen went into the Nahani Valley or the general region in some time, probably in 1909. And this was also when the RCMP closed the McLeod Brothers case. Mm-hmm. So the route that he took into the valley is quite contested and there's two versions of which route that he takes sorry not route like kind of like the reason why he was in that area but okay so the version one version is that Jorgensen was partners with a man called pool fields Mm -hmm. and they worked at a trading post together so that kind of let him to go out into nahani and the second version states that jorgensen was partners with this man called billy atkinson who was a trapper so they would go hunting into the nahani or something like that uh, from time to time like i said why do i recognize that name atkinson isn't that mr bean's title like the actor that plays mr bean oh actually no never mind that's no, I was thinking about it all. <laughs> oh my god. Um I was thinking about um ah oh shit, I think I can conf- I confused him with like Albert Johnson. Oh no. Maybe. Albert Johnson was the The Mad Trapper. Yeah. I 
something okay maybe it's just because of the a i was like oh we've heard of him before or it could be just the fact that he was a trapper that yeah that too anyways sorry 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 Continue. Yeah. yeah no it's okay in this version like the fact that he could have been partners with pool fields or just friends with billy atkinson or whatever both of them could have been happened and we'll find out a little bit why mm-hmm. later but regardless jorgensen got supplies from pool fields and went off to search for the lost gold yeah. that was left by the McLeod brothers. So this is a bit of a side story, not really relevant to Jorgensen, but it's a it's it's kind of a hot tea. So while Martin Jorgensen was on his adventure, his friend Billy Atkinson was convicted of manslaughter and was serving time. His wife Mary went to live with Poole Fields, who was also good friends with Atkinson. So Poole Fields is the guy that potentially could have been partners with Jorgensen. Mm -hmm. So she started off as a housekeeper for him, but Mary and Poole Fields got married sometime later and Atkinson actually gave his blessings. Okay, interesting. Side story. Not relevant to anything, but... Well, I guess, yeah, how long was he going to prison for? Like, life or something like that? I don't even know. Mm. And we can discuss this a little bit later and we can talk about it, whether this version is accurate. Because there's two versions Mm -hmm. of what happened to Martin Jorgensen and we can talk about that later so <laughs> okay it gets good so in the pool fields and Atkinson version Sometime in 1913, a man by the name Jules completed his adventure in the Nahani Mountains and went into Pelly Lake, Yukon. Mm -hmm. Once he got to the trading post there, he went to the courier service person and said that he has a letter for Billy Atkinson from a white man that he met in the Mackenzie Mountain, which is probably Martin Jorgensen. And he said that he has to deliver this letter to him because he got paid in raw gold so this uh suggested that jorgensen may have actually found the gold and then obviously he is alive anything you want to add there i call sus on that but okay yeah (laughs) the letter was eventually delivered to mary so billy atkinson's ex-wife and now Mm -hmm. pool field's current wife and she accepted the letter on billy's behalf but she gave the letter to her husband now husband pool field The letter contained this crude, greasy, stained map, and it included a cabin, well, sorry, it indicated a cabin half a mile up a flat river, Mm -hmm. and a message asking Billy Atkinson to come quick, because your boy struck rich. He didn't say that, but he said (laughs) he he found the gold, but (laughs) imagine if the letter actually said that. Your boy struck rich. Mm -hmm. And it's like a bunch of dollar signs. Since Atkinson at this point was in jail, Poole Fields decided to go instead. Mm -hmm. So the year is 1914. Again, the beginning part of this is like irrelevant because he actually doesn't go to see Martin Jorgensen until much later, but regardless. So Poole Fields collected supplies and set for Nahani. He was hoping to collect the gold for himself and also his friend Billy Atkinson, who was still incarcerated. He was accompanied by a Denny man named Oscar. Yep. So he actually didn't go to see Martin Jorgensen at first, but rather he spent some time camping with Oscar near Virginia Falls in the winter. And that year he gathered some pelts and then returned back to civilization during the summer. A year later, he actually goes to go see Martin Jorgensen. Who he went with is contested. So he could have gone with Oscar. That was one of them. He could have gone on his own. However, the audiobooks kept saying Saying that mm-hmm. him and his crews did something in the Nahani area, so obviously it's not him alone. The audiobook also said that he could have gone with his wife, or he could have gone with Atkinson or a man named Olaf. So there's Atkinson at this point could have been out of custody, but we're not quite sure who he went with. So Pool Fields and whoever he decided to go into the Nahani, they actually did find a trail that led to Jorgensen's cabin, which was 
near a creek by Flat River. I sadly don't have maps for you, but you're welcome to Google these if you want. Okay, so Poolfield gets a map from Mary, who got it from Jorgensen. Jorgensen's messenger, and you say that might be not true. Maybe. Like I said, there are so many versions of it. Right, yeah. Who knows what happens, but the end point is somewhat similar so i don't think it matters okay and then he goes with the, the messenger was a dene man yeah no we don't know much about the messenger other than the fact that he actually explored the dene man you're thinking of is oscar which is his i think a buddy uh, that he decided to camp out in virginia falls for one winter okay so he goes maybe goes with oscar out to find maybe goes with oscar his wife atkinson yeah olaf uh, so it leaves a year later to go and find where Jorgensen is to find all the gold and stuff. Okay. All right. I am following. I think in terms of travel companions, it might not really matter because if it's such a large list of people that he went with, honestly, it's just, it's just speculation. Mm -hmm. Probably everyone was just like this person or this person or this person or that person, but it, it's not like leaning any way. But anyways. And you're absolutely right about that because like ultimately it doesn't really matter who said why when there's like multiple versions of one story mm -hmm. and this version does get a little bit weird at the end so oh, okay. yeah we'll come across that right. so again it doesn't really matter because the dude's dead anyways so again there are very different versions of what pool fields and his quote-unquote crew saw at Jorgensen's cabin there's a lot of different versions about what he saw. Let's go with that. So one is that Martin Jorgensen's cabin was in complete ashes and Martin Jorgensen's skeletal remains were found headless. Okay. Of course. Of course. And the second one is that Martin Jorgensen's skeletal remain was on his chest. So the, yeah, the body right. was facing downwards. Uh, with a bucket near the creek. It is assumed that in this version that Martin Jorgensen was getting water from the creek, whether it was to put out the fire that was burning his cabin or in general, but he basically dropped the bucket and started to run when he saw something that scared him. He may have been killed during that process of running away. And that one, it makes sense to me. Hmm. So Martin Jorgensen went into Nahani with a weapon, a rifle, a gun, whatever it may be. And the whereabouts of that weapon in the Poole Atkinson version is contested as well. Some say it was gone, some say it was not. That it was near him, near the cabin, and there mm -hmm. was no firm answer. The whereabouts of his head was also contested. So some say it was nowhere to be found. It was missing like the McLeod brothers. Others say it was burnt near the cabin. Oh, sorry. It was near the burnt cabin and a hole near the crown of the head. Others say the skull was found in the bushes. Some say that the jaw of his skull uh, or of the head was missing. Poole Fields, however, stated that while looking for Jorgensen, he found an axe and that Jorgensen axe was near him, but no skull was ever found. So I think he found a second axe and Jorgensen did have an axe with him. It was near him and then his skull was missing. That's what I think it says, but I'm not sure at this point. After this, what Poole Fields did what his actions were were kind of debated so i have three possible things that jorgensen probably could have done one is that it's possible that pool fields left the crime scene undisturbed for the rcmp to investigate yep. and uh he left for fort simpson to report to the rcmp whether he reported or not is not clear and i'm gonna tell you why after our next version the second theory is that he buried jorgensen in the mountains and marked the spot with a cross similar to how Charlie McLeod buried his brothers. Okay. But when he came back into civilization, he told a Nahani Park Ranger that he left the area with an eerie feeling of being watched. Yeah, so how do you like that version? Buried. So the second one is that he might have buried the dude himself. Yeah, just to give like a nice burial okay i don't think his intentions were like oh let me cover this up because like to be honest like nobody's gonna go up there anyway nothing mm. about the gold is mentioned and i think we'll talk more about that towards the end but do you have any questions for me about this version i kind of want to like not talk about the gold just yet mm -hmm. i know it has been mentioned 
But other than that, do you have any other questions? No, because you know me, I like going for the most out there theory possible. But the one I have running in my head has to do with the gold. So I'll wait until later. So the next version is called the Osias. And I'm not sure what the last name is, 100%. It's either me or or New York. Okay. So... I'm just going to call this guy Mr. Osias from now on. So basically, in this version that we have, there's agreement that Jorgensen entered Nahani in 1909. However, in 1910, Jorgensen actually returned to civilization to one of the trade posts because he actually could not find any of the gold. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit different compared to the first version. Once coming into civilization, he meets this man who's called Mr. Osias, and they partner up and go to Nahani together. They build a cabin near Flat River or Clearwater Creek, and they stay there that winter. In spring in 1912, they return to Fort Simpson to restock and head back to their camp in Nahani. Jorgensen wanted to spend the rest of the winter there. However, Mr. Osias wanted to return to Fort Simpson in the fall. Before parting, the two men had decided that they would meet up in Fort Simpson the following summer to catch up. However, this would be the last time Mr. Osias would see Jorgensen a lot. In the summer when Jorgensen failed to show up to Fort Simpson, Mr. Osias wasn't upset or worried. He probably thought Mr. Jorgensen forgot. And he did actually ask around if anybody who went to Nahani in the past few months, saw Jorgensen, and he was lucky enough to come across a group of Dene hunters who claimed that they saw Jorgensen go west of Flat River a few weeks ago. So Jorgensen, up to this point, is still alive. Mm-hmm. In fall 1914, Mr. Osias returned to the camp he left uh, Jorgensen in. When he went there, he found that the camp was... Complete, okay. The cabin was completely burnt down. Near the ashes, he found a loaded rifle, revolver, and some clothes and some trousers that he recognized as Jorgensen's. So the odd thing, however, is that Mr. Osias actually didn't report to the RCMP right away. He, in fact, decided to stay in the area for that winter. Again, I'm not sure like whether he stayed within the burnt cabin area for the winter. And again, from the f- first episode, so that we did with the McLeod brothers, they had like a traveling time. So if they were in, let's say, um, Nahani region up north in the fall, they would actually stay the winter, then come back when it's mm-hmm. uh, spring because of the conditions of weather. It just made sense. So I don't know if that was his thought process, but he decided to stay at during that time. And I do think he did eventually tell the RCMP at this time was called RNWMP, Royal Northwest Mountain Police, because they actually did investigate Jorgensen's death, but it was the year after in the summer. So again, traveling blockage and time of like that so the reporting of the crime and because osias i don't know again if he's living within that burnt crime scene area okay. when the police came to investigate the crime scene was extremely tampered with so the police actually didn't have any leads they just ended up dropping the case so i got some theories they're not my personal theories there are theories from there are theories created by people that lived in that northern region during that time so i'm gonna read you some of the theories that they have this is um still with the second one right um yes so okay. in this version it's it, like the author is saying that there were these theories within this version okay but i guess this also works for the first version as well and again like i said like both things could have been happening in s- some ways like i think jorgensen could have known both Poole Fields, Atkinson, and also Mr. Osias. So it's a possibility that multiple people knew him and multiple people had their own stories. But that's just my opinion. So theory one, and these, again, these are theories from people living within that time. Theory one is bear. This is assuming that the head was never found at the crime scene. And this is me saying it. This is my opinion of that theory. This is assuming that the head was never found at the crime scene. As I mentioned before, there has been a lot of debate about what happened with the head. And if the head, in fact, was not at the crime scene, then there is a possibility that the bear did take it. In the first Nahani episode, I think 
think I mentioned that the brain, when it's when the body is decomposing, it does create a smell, which would attract bears, animals, or cannibals, whatever. And his remains were all skeletons, so animals did probably eventually take over mm-hmm. at some point. This theory kind of doesn't work if the skull was at the scene, but it is also possible the bear ate what it needed to eat and left it there and the body did decomposed. Uh-huh. Theory two, Jorgensen starved to death, also possible but does not explain why his cabin was burnt unless we assume the cabin caught on fire while he was cooking and he passed out while trying to get water from the creek and died like that. And the third theory is cryptids, which we haven't got into Nahani's cryptids and we're probably going to do that in two episodes, but it's a possibility. I, I, I don't think this was a cryptid thing. Theory four was murder for gold and I don't have anything to say about that so that being said pool fields we're gonna go back to pool fields for a fair, uh, brief second this is not within that last theory this is separate so pool fields at some point claimed to the public that with the RCMP, he was very close to arresting the person who murdered Jorgensen. However, this person happened to happened to die in California. In response, the RCMP in 1952 said there was actually no file or record of a missing person under the name Martin Jorgensen. It is a possibility that Martin Jorgensen did travel to the region and maybe he did make it out safely and decided not to contact anybody that he knew. So this could be the fact that he did find the gold, he decided to leave and not contact anybody. Many years later, in 1970, a bush pilot heard a rumor from a Dene woman who heard this from her mom, Who and the mom heard it from her husband, and the husband's name was Diamond C. The rumor is that a Nahani man had walked into Jorgensen's cabin while Jorgensen was out. Mm-hmm. The man helped himself to some moose meat. He cooked it. While doing so, he added some seasoning. However, the thing that he was adding was not seasoning. It was crystalline i have no idea how to pronounce this spell the second word it's s t r y c h n i n e strychnine wait pronunciation how to pronounce stretching strychnine strychnine Strychnine. i knew how to pronounce it when i wrote it but i should have actually youtubed it (laughs) strychnine crystal crystalline strychnine Which is what? It is an odorless powder. It can be inhaled or consumed, but it is very poisonous and you only need like a very small dose for it to have a severe effect. And this man was powdering the moose meat like it was salt. The reason why Jorgensen had it because it was for trapping purposes, Mm. but the poor Naha man had this meat and died instantly. And this was discovered, this was 1970? This is while Jorgensen was alive. But a bush pilot found this out in 1970 from a Denny woman. Okay, okay. Got it. So the Naha man died and the f- two friends, uh, one including Diamond C, the man telling his wife this story who later told her daughter and the daughter later, later told the bush pilot, the two of his friends, Diamond C and another guy, felt really emotional about their friend's death, but they also blamed Jorgensen for the death. I'm not sure why, but yeah. And they eventually did get revenge by okay. burning down his cabin and then murdering Martin Jorgensen. And that is the story of Martin Jorgensen. So what do you think? So sorry, the the guys that went and burned down his cabin were the brothers of the guy who ate the meat? No, uh, just friends. Or friends. just friends. Okay. Yeah. So if one is true, my idea is that Poole killed him and there was already a concept of like people losing their heads in the Nahani Valley. So he was like, oh, I'll make it look like that and set up a whole elaborate thing to get to the gold. You think Poole killed him. Okay. But if it's a second one, then Poole still killed him. Yeah. Because, because of, I guess, one thing. Poole said very publicly that him and the RCMP were about to find the killer, right? Right. Of Jorgensen. Okay. But then that that's some random dude who died in like Carolina. Uh, California. In California. Yeah. So like, sounds like he was making some things up. 100%. And um, one of my questions was like, what are your thoughts on this Poole Field guy? Because he actually never reported 
as the RCMP. Neither did Mr. Osias because the RCMP literally said like, oh, there was no missing person report filed of a man named Martin Jorgensen. Mm -hmm. All of it is BS. So Pool Fields could have potentially done it. Like, I think one of the questions was like, why do you think Pool Fields lied? Potentially because he did find the gold. Or maybe he just didn't find the gold and he wanted to do this for attention. I'm not sure. So my second point or question is that the RCMP obviously said that there was no file with Martin Jorgensen's name on it. So there was, in Mr. Osias's version, there was a murder investigation that he said happened that never actually occurred. He could have also potentially murdered Martin Jorgensen because he never reported this either. Assuming that the RCMP is not lying. That is assuming, but again, here's the thing. So Poole Fields did lie about the California man. The RCMP was like, what the heck, we need to save our ass or let the truth out. I just don't see why they would say like, hey, Martin Jorgensen was never filed as missing. They could have just said like, yeah, we dealt with the matter. It's been dropped because we couldn't find it instead of saying like, oh yeah, he probably went back to safety. There was no evidence of this ever happening or a missing report ever being filed. Not to be blamed for it or... Because at that point, there was a few people that had died in the Honey Valley right the the mcleod brothers were still pretty fresh in everybody's mind so it's like oh like the rcmp is not doing their job kind of thing Mm -hmm. so maybe it was like a like it might have been like a bit of a blame game it's like oh like we'll just say like yeah they they never filed anything you know so you know how are we supposed to know to go look for this guy and now these guys are saying that this dude is dead Mm -hmm. so my next question was Do you think there's a chance that Jorgensen did leave Nahani safely and never really contacted anyone? The body was someone else's, like a Naha man or Osias. Maybe he struck so rich, he simply said, screw everybody. Again, they didn't have the technology back then to look at a skeleton and, you know, put it in a lab and being like, who is this? So what are your thoughts on that being a possibility? And we, and and I did, I think I, mentioned it not too long ago like he could have just left and never yeah. told anybody because okay let's bring up the gold now we don't know what happened to the gold in none of the theories it doesn't say whether pool fields got the gold or if mr osias got the gold unlike the mcloyd brothers the gold and the situation of the gold was never said in the mcloyd brothers we heard there was gold out there mm-hmm. there was gold found within where they were camping but here we don't hear any of it so we we actually don't know if there was gold in that cabin or not and enough gold to kill a person over in my and i have this in my notes at the end i do have a strong feeling towards the rumor mm-hmm. like it could have been someone who was very pissed off whether it be because jorgensen directly or indirectly killed someone a friend a brother whoever yeah. it is but that makes more sense and even if that was jorgensen's body oh, mr osias or pool field atkinson could would have saw that body but again we don't hear about that gold i'm trying to think back to like the first episode when we we talked about this and i think when it came to the gold i thought it was either like a government job they got the gold or like the hudson bay company Loki got the gold mm-hmm. you know that would explain why they're still around they're a very old corporation you need money to finance that mm-hmm. 100% and a shit ton of gold could have been it right yeah I just like conspiracy theories so I'm always gonna go for like the, the weirdest one out there yeah so wait what was the question again I forgot <laughs> oh yeah so I think it was about the gold oh no no whether or not Jorgensen uh, it's still out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like whether or not he got away. Not out there. Of course he's not out there. He's dead. But you never know. You know, the, you mentioned some stuff about curses. Who knows? Maybe he's wandering the Honey Valley. As a acting cryptid. On yeah, I I don't know what that is, but maybe he's one of those things. Cryptids are like the Skinwalkers and Mothman. Oh. Uh, frog people, reptile people, witches, vampires. You know. Oh. Um, those are cryptids okay what are what are the they called here i forget but they're similar to skinwalkers the canadian version of skinwalkers yeah so we'll monsters uh the loch ness monster the ogopogo oh damn okay those are all cryptids i don't i don't think he survived oh like 
Let's say he did. He probably died of old age. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, no, no, no. I know, I, I know, I know, I know. But what I mean is, let me go back. I mean, like, I don't think he lived through that encounter and like faked his death or anything like that. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know what it is. This, this, this dude feels different. I feel like he would have, especially now that everybody knows that the gold is out there from the like the brothers and everyone's trying to go and get it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's an incentive now to come back and be the hero, be the one who found the goal right right so if he found it he probably would have come back meaning you know somebody got to him to shut him up now pool might have been involved mm -hmm. in that this mr osias mm -hmm. guy no they only found one body do we have any like details about osias coming back no and that's the thing like we don't hear the living conditions whether like these men pool atkinson or osias actually lived like a comfortable life after these events so we can't really say like oh, okay well where'd you get mm -hmm. the money the gold but yeah we don't we don't know okay but in his version it did say that there was a murder investigation but so he would have had to come back into civilization in order to report that and then we don't know much information after that about him and then he was silenced yeah so atkinson's in prison osias is like up in the air he comes back being like hey there's a murder investigation and then poof he's yeah. gone jorgensen is like most likely the one who's dead and then that leaves us with pool fields coming back being like we know the killer we're going after him only to find out that dude's already dead meaning he was making it up so yeah my suspicion is that yeah. pool killed jorgensen now do we have anything on the wife was there anything about like new kids like the wife in pool fields or anything like that because that would point us no to something but no no details on that hmm. yeah i guess there's, there's only so much speculation at that point because i was gonna say i can like come up with a whole new theory about it but yeah of the details that we have been presented that feels like the most no what's what i'm looking for not proper but likely yeah most likely case. I had a strong feeling about that rumor about the Nahani man um, dying, which is a possibility, and then his friends getting revenge on Martin Jorgensen. Because I feel like that covers everything. Let's say I'm going to leave the gold out of this because we're not really sure where that gold went or is at this point regardless mm -hmm. if we assume that rumor is true in the in the audiobook it said that diamond c who told the story to his wife was on his deathbed so people rarely i don't think they lie often on the deathbed there's, there's a lot of deathbed confessions in this storyline wasn't there another one in uh, a previous episode too the first one the first one yeah uh, so we're uh charlie uh, uh, charlie uh the one of the younger brothers of the mcloy brothers ha made a friend who happened to have the last name weir and his dying confession was that he was the weir that killed the brothers in the nahani valley right yeah was it that one so yeah this man confessed that he did kill mm -hmm. martin jorgensen and it kind of makes sense like let's say they burned down his cabin first so one of the versions is that he may have been trying to put out the fire and died in the process of being scared and trying to run away they burnt down his cabin martin jorgensen realized that was trying to get the water to put out the fire in the cabin he he then saw the men who were trying to obviously kill him, tried to run and was killed in the process. But also the starvation angle also works for me, but I think this one makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, when, when, we, when we look at it, I, I agree, that makes sense. But it's not fun. <laughs> It's not fun to solve something that's meant to be unsolved. I 100% agree. <sighs> yeah, it, yeah, honestly, it is the most logical choice. I don't, actually don't even know why. I, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> you just finished talking about it. But I'm, I'm so focused on like, ooh, what is like the weirdest thing that could be happening here? Yeah. I agree. But would you like to say it? Would you like to say it? Would you, would you like to say the weird thing? Say it. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I, I I did, I did. I feel like when we do the cryptids, you'll mm -hmm. have a lot of weird stuff to say. Awesome. That's your moment to shine. 
All right. In that case, then I will accept the normalcy of this theory because it does tie everything together. And if Mans did confess on his deathbed, I'm just saying maybe he got paid so his family was taken care of. If he just confessed to this one little thing, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Well, he, he wasn't like in jail for doing it. He was just dying at home. And he's like, listen, wife, I need to tell you something. I don't know if he got paid for anything because this was his friend, someone he had a close bond with. So he felt the need to do it personally. Mm -hmm. And there was someone else involved. We don't know who that is. But yeah. And then his daughter shared the story years later. Years later, huh? In 1970. Right. Okay. All right. I feel like that might be like a little bit of a relevance. Oh, you know what? <laughs> now that you say that. <laughs> say that weird thing. It's a lie. It's all for attention. She brought that up because no one was found. And so she's like, hey, this is a story that my mom told me that, you know, he she got told by my dad once my dad was in his, on his deathbed, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. And then she got relevancy. And if it's 1970, she got on the news. She got paid for it. I solved it. She made it up. She wasn't on the news, though. <laughs> oh, she didn't get any airtime for this? No. Well, what's the point of... She just told a man. What's, what's, what's the... Did the man get airtime? No, I didn't find any articles or news clippings from this. No one got air... Okay, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what the point is. Nobody got paid. No one got paid? Really? Damn. No one got paid. Such. Everybody went to work and they got their regular paychecks. <laughs> so my last question is, if we assume that Weir did not kill the McLeod brothers, mm -hmm. so yeah, do you think something similar happened to uh, the McLeod brothers? It was like a frustrated person who just wanted food. And the McLeod brothers were kind of in fight mode, actually, because they had gold to protect. Mm. And again, we're, we're just assuming that Weir did not take their gold. That Weir did not take the gold. Okay. Assuming that he did not take the gold, I guess. But like, this this brings me back to like the initial question of like, who is going around chopping people's heads off? Like specifically to continue this. The axe murder? <laughs> <laughs> New theory. Here's what I'll tell you though. Yeah, this was another conclusion that we had after the first episode is that there is another freaking random person running around and i think even the last episode too there's someone else who's just having the time of their life just chopping people's heads off apparently 100 percent. like when i was reading or sorry listening to another podcast i realized that these stories that we hear about you know people going missing or murdered in the nahani region weren't the only people going in there there's constant flow of people going in and out i actually at work i was searching it up during my break like any articles or stories that i could find i found this entire pdf of like work that was being done in the nahani valley so like pipeline placements and other construction work that was being done mm -hmm. so those people nothing happened to them except for these people that i previously listed it was like that one-off rare occasion wait the, was the pipeline work happening at the same time as the prospectors were in there like it was the same time frame yeah it was around that oh you know what then maybe this could be a scooby-doo scenario <laughs> Okay. You ever watch Scooby-Doo? Oh, I love Scooby-Doo. Okay. You know those episodes where, like, um, the gang gets together to, like, investigate a haunted cemetery, haunted house, whatever, blah, 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 right? And obviously, we always find it's somebody under the mask. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the reason why they do it is to scare people away from doing something with the land or doing something with the area. Mm -hmm. Could this have been, like, an initial attempt at, like, scare tactics to, like, stop these big projects? But it just didn't work. I was thinking while you were saying it's the other way around. It is a scare tactic to of like these project people to scare off prospectors. So those projects could be completed. I was thinking that. Well, like if they want to get the projects completed, that's they don't really need to scare off the prospectors just have RCMP there. But I mean, like in terms of like the natives trying to scare everyone off for like sanctity of the land kind of thing. Well, 100%. And that's what the question was asking, like, 
angry, frustrated people. I guess you answered that it could have just been them, just a person trying to live their life up there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, do you have any questions? Because I'm kind of done. I'd want to see. Maybe we can look into for the next episode. Is whether or not there were any formal complaints lodged、mm-hmm. by the Dene. It's just the Dene people, right?、Mm-hmm. Dene and、uh, Naha. Yeah. So, if there were any formal complaints or any formal appeals or anything like that that were lodged by them about these construction projects that were happening in Nahani Valley, I can look at that PDF one more time. I really doubt it because, like, obviously Native people move around, and depending on where it was happening, I actually have. You mentioned a really good thing, and I kind of marked down with the time you mentioned it. I have a whole new theory, but I think I'm gonna wait for the last episode to, to say that. Okay. I haven't encountered any files or documents that say the Denny and Naha specifically were upset. Of course, they were upset, but they had the ability to move into other regions, which of course happened. Well, but see, that's the thing, though. Even if you have the ability to to move, right? If the area is sacred in some way to your people, like、mm-hmm. the equivalent, essentially, of like a holy site, you know, that could now again. But this is all alleged. Everyone listen. Listening. This is alleged. Okay, relax. But like, I could totally see a situation where, like, yeah, they move, but then it's like trying to like scare them off by going after what they could. They couldn't go after those. Projects because maybe they had heavy RCMP and police protection and involvement, right? But go after a few prospectors on their own,、mm-hmm. you know, make their deaths look、right. all creepy and weird, and voila, you've created a rumor that hey, this place actually has a lot of things going on.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyways. I assume those projects were never blocked due to the rumors and stuff. So even if that was the case, it was very unsuccessful. But yeah, anyways, that's my last little tidbit there. I'm so proud of the Scooby Doo thing. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm impressed. Yeah. So that's pretty much Martin Jorgensen's case.、Okay. Allegedly, we don't know if that's tr- any of that's true or not. So I thought Martin Jorgensen and the McDlyd brothers' story there was some similarities. The two other cases that I'm going to tell you about they are not similar to these two. Okay. They're very different, and we will also hear a story from a survivor of the Nohani Valley. Wait, like joining us? No. <laughs> No. Oh. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> Yo, I was like, what? Let's Where'd、go. you find this person? <laughs> well, like, I mean, Raf, we could, we could just go there. That's on a field trip. That's true. That's true. And we'd be the survivors. Y- you know, um, I I have a rule about things that are anywhere near haunted. Okay, it's 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 a black guy that dies first, fam. <laughs> well, no. Nobody black here died yet, so yeah, because there's there's no one black going there. You can be the first. Who will die first? <laughs> first. Okay, all right. So, what do you mean hearing from a survivor? As in, like a video, like something recorded, kind of thing, or no? It it's it's just again, I hear heard it on a podcast, so some article, story, or、uh, audio book must be out there of this case. But we hear.、Mm-hmm. They went to Nahani or some area in Nahani, came back and kind of like what they experienced.、Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So you're gonna hear it from me. You might not enjoy my voice, but you're gonna hear it from me. Ah,、uh, if that was the case,、uh, podcasting would be very difficult, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> but yes, that was my presentation. All right, sounds、um, good. Like I said, next episode of my episode will be of two cases. They're gonna be very quick. I, I could probably speed run them. About different things that happened, and we can start talking about.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see how your theories change and stuff like that. And the next episode you're going to be listening to is Raf's episode. Do you have any exciting? What are they called? Fishy hooks, cliffhangers. <laughs> well, no, cliffhangers is you do the event and then you just cut it short, kind of thing.、Yeah. Do Do I have any fishy hooks? For the,、yeah. This so, one will call it fishy from now、hook. on. Fishy hooks. I do not actually. It's going to be a total, complete surprise. It will just be very, very entertaining. 
thanks everyone for for joining us um thank you ipsha for the episode i have more notes on nahani to review and we'll continue to have more i cannot wait until we get to the cryptids and such but yeah anyways for everyone who's you know listening in thanks again for your continued support you can find us on you know spotify youtube anywhere you listen to anything like this you will be able to hear us and yeah leave comments send us concerns send us complaints i don't know whatever you want to send especially if you know more about this case or you have corrections or anything like that we're always open to uh, listening to all of that Alrighty. well i i guess then uh bye y'all bye